David, the most famous king of ancient Israel, was promised a dynasty that would live on forever. His son Solomon succeeded him and extended the boundaries of the great nation. However, upon Solomon's death, the nation was divided in two. Only two tribes remained loyal to the Davidic line, which continued to rule from Jerusalem for centuries until the great city fell to the Babylonians in 586 BC. The heir to David's throne, Zedekiah, was taken captive and his sons were killed before his very eye. When Zedekiah later died in captivity, it appeared as though this promise had run its course and the Davidic dynasty had come to an end. If you were on the cusp of failing to live up to a promise given long ago, would you draw attention to it? Only a short time before Zedekiah was taken captive, the ancient scholar Jeremiah records this promise. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Jerusalem's fall to Babylon left the region in a turbulent state. Jeremiah had been in prison for his proclamations of Jerusalem's coming destruction. The Babylonians gave control of the region to Gedaliah, making him governor. He not only released Jeremiah from prison, but also presented him with provisions and what was likely a monetary gift. Jeremiah continued to live in the region until a man named Ishmael led an insurrection, killing Gedaliah. Yohanan, who had served under Gedaliah and had even warned him of Ishmael's coming treachery, then gathered the remnants of the military together in an effort to restore order. They forced Ishmael to flee, but were still worried that the Babylonians would seek retribution for the death of the man they had left in charge, Gedaliah. Because of this fear, Yohanan led a band of survivors to Egypt, out of the reach of the Babylonian army. A partial listing of those taken to Egypt was recorded by Jeremiah. They include Jeremiah and his assistant, a man named Baruch. But it also lists characters that bring our story back to the Davidic line. The king's daughters. Remember Zedekiah's sons had been killed. We were not previously told what had happened to his daughters, but here we find them alive and accompanying Jeremiah to Egypt. It is important to note that Israelite law at the time did include a provision for inheritance, such as the throne, to pass through daughters if the previous holder did not have any sons. Now is when it's helpful to glean a little more information on this man, Jeremiah. His writings open with the inclusion of a commission which he wholeheartedly viewed as being given to him by God. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Most of our records for Jeremiah's career show him delivering a powerful message of warning to a nation on the brink of collapse. The meaning of his commission to root out and pull down, to destroy and throw down, is fairly clear. While he would not be doing the destruction himself, he bore witness to the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the fall of the house of Judah. More curious, however, is the final item mentioned. He was also to build and to plant. One logical interpretation of this commission connects it with the promise that was re-emphasized shortly before the fall of Jerusalem and the death of Zedekiah, that David would never lack a man to sit on the throne of Israel. The wording of this is worth examining. The northern portion, called the House of Israel, had been taken captive nearly 200 years beforehand, around 722 BC. We track the migration of those northern 10 tribes in our viewpoint titled, Where Are the Lost 10 Tribes of Israel? A link to this video is provided in the description. If Jeremiah was to witness the uprooting of the Davidic dynasty, then his commission also requires him to oversee the re-establishment or replanting of that Davidic line in a nation which included the descendants of the nation of Israel. It is very interesting to note that various Irish myths describe Jeremiah traveling to Ireland, accompanied by his assistant and a princess who then marries an Irish prince. One of the most amazing legends in Irish history links the biblical prophet Jeremiah with the Emerald Isle. Oxford-educated Mary Rogers recounts several versions of the Jeremiah story. Each version tells of Jeremiah fleeing from Jerusalem at the time of the Babylonian conquest. One account makes Jeremiah flee to Ireland with Teotephi, eldest daughter of Zedekiah. Other accounts have Jeremiah and the princess or princesses and a man named Barak or Baruch leaving Egypt or the Isles of the West. While one must use caution when referring to myths and legends as supporting evidence, the fact that a dynasty which still maintains a throne today would arise from the same region as these myths 
should not be overlooked. We'll soon be publishing another Tomorrow's World Viewpoint, which will examine this latter dynastic line. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure you don't miss another video from Tomorrow's World Viewpoint. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And for more content like this, please visit our website at tomorrowsworldviewpoint.org.